Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Ransom of Adema. Yeah, hell yeah. Dude, we appreciate you taking some time out of your day to do this. First off, uh, how are you, sir? Whereabouts in the world are you? And plug anything you'd like to plug. And then answer my question. <laughs> I can do all of those things. Um, I'm in uh, Bakersfield, California. Um, yes. In Say my, hi to Jonathan uh, Davis for us. I will. <laughs> um uh in my extremely modest home studio um and then uh, what i want to plug is this weekend uh we'll be playing the orange county cannabis awards festival that'll be on saturday it's supposed to be like a bunch of cool bands at the garden amp theater there so if you're in the neighborhood come check it are you are you a big cannabis consumer yourself or is that just uh just a uh, fun gig that you guys want to do no, I personally don't at all. I don't. Well, I don't consume anything. Uh, and and I'm, I'm going to plead the fifth on whether or not I ever have. Heard. Uh, currently, no. Uh, but you know, I've uh, uh, I, I've worked in a collective before. Um, you know, I've seen like the uh, definitely the positives of uh, medicinal cannabis, and uh, so I'm definitely not uh, anti. You know what I mean. I got you. So you've you've actually kind of jumped in and out of of Edema a couple of times. What what keeps calling you back? I know it's it's your baby, but what what keeps calling you back? And you're just like, you know what? I belong with the boys on stage. Um, well, man, I think that you just kind of just said it. You know, um, I I think that I think as as time has gone on, you know, like it kind of feels like it's something that not that not like I have something to prove, but more that I have something to offer, you know, and, uh, edema, like, I feel like, um, truly like our, our best days are ahead of us, you know, and that musically, like we just have so much more that we can give to people that, uh, that's all the more reason for me to be a part of it and to, uh, to help with that, you know? Now let's go back to some of the, the ultra mega hits hits that you guys had. Uh, we'll play those in a little bit, but what was it like hearing your music on the radio for the first time? And when did you when did you know, holy shit, we've made it? Like when did you have that moment? Well, those are those are killer questions. Um, so so like hearing music on the radio, we were actually on the road. You know, because like you, we recorded the record first, and before it was released, we were already like out on the road, like playing for like five people a night and shit. And uh, <laughs> it was extremely humbling for a very long time. And uh, and then like, uh, and you guys were already signed at this time. You were already signed at this time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but you know, it takes time for like promo and all of that and manufacturing. They they get all their ducks lined up in a row. At least that's how they did it back in, uh, you know, 2000. And, um, while we were on the road, you know, like first time, I think we were like in New Jersey and like heard it come through the, the van speakers and we're like, Oh fuck. You know what I mean? Like it was super surreal. You know what I mean? Uh, super and then, surreal. <laughs> totally surreal. Um, then I would say, um, the like we have made it moment i would say i would say was having a a video on trl uh, back when mtv was a thing <laughs> and uh like having a video on trl while being on tour with lincoln park and walking down the street in Man manhattan new york and like just like the guitar player getting recognized that was uh that was like yeah dude some shit's happening <laughs> that is <laughs> might crazy be something to this speaking of <laughs> speaking of lincoln park uh r.i.p chester obviously do you have any really really cool fun chester moment that was more special to you than another than a different one for some reason oh that's a really good question i wish you would have prepared me um <laughs> 
No such thing as preparation. Let's go. Totally. Um, let me think. Like, I mean, I know. Actually, yes, I do know. Um, one of the Lincoln Park. I don't know if this is common knowledge at all, but Lincoln Park. It was actually one of the earliest supporters of Edema. And uh, they were like the first ones to like put us on like a cool show, kind of like got us connected to uh, other bands and stuff like that. Like they kind of were like a believer in us before like uh, anyone else, you know. Um, we played. They had us like open the show for them and the, at the Palladium in Los Angeles. And I think I'm trying to think. I don't even know if like the record was out or maybe the record was just barely out. And uh, yeah, I think the record was just barely out for like maybe a year. And uh, I remember like I was sitting there like doing my thing. And like at this point, like I felt like I had my gig down pretty fucking tight. And uh, and I hadn't been paying attention, but I noticed at some part, a point during the set that Chester was actually like like backstage, like sitting on like my side of stage, like watching what I was doing. Like, oh, yeah, like that sort of thing. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. That's like, cool that's- shit. Like, coming from him, I mean, he's the fucking master of his craft, you know, so to see someone like that, like, you know, not, like, throwing tomatoes at me was just, like, that is a cool pretty story. mind-blowing. Tell me about Ready to Die. Uh, who did you guys go to for, for the production on this track? Um, that was uh, Amir Jarrock. Um, he, uh, our singer, Ryan um, Shuck, he was uh, one of the guitar players in Orgy, as well as Amir. They were kind of like uh, like two of the main architects of like that whole sound. And uh, Amir's been uh, producing and mixing for decades. You know, like he's he's nothing. He's definitely not new to that. He's a vet. And, uh, you know, like when uh, the idea like when he said he wanted to produce us, it was like, wow, like that's actually perfect, you know, because he really understands kind of like how the interplay between um, electronica and heavy guitars, like how to, how to really work that right, you know? Right. And uh, he's, he's more than, than a technician. He's a, he's an amazing technician. He's a tone genius, but also creatively like he, uh, he's also genius at that too. Lloyd, uh, what questions do you have for Mike before I play a little more of ready to die? Did you ever answer me? Touch the uh, your band logo. What is that? Is that a green screen? Yeah, a- I mean, like uh, on the the like on Zoom and uh, all the like yeah these things, you can put like your own background back there. I do have a green screen, but I didn't uh, I didn't I didn't set it up. So I'm lazy. But if you set it up and you're like um, you have enough contrast between yourself and what's happening in the background then it'll just put up the background automatically that's fucking dope <laughs> thank you ready to die Six is so big it's like it's just huge sound it's like a wall of sound just coming at you in the hook right there he did a fantastic job on this really really good job thank you uh we have a we have a question in chat it says what was the band that influenced you to pick up a guitar oh um god that's a really good question um well i mean like metallica pantera alice in chains um like those bands were, were really big to me like they had huge guitars um but like not just like not like more than just like playing some twangy thing or whatever it wasn't background playing it's like the the riffs that that those guitars play were as much of like a hook as like words or or a vocal melody. You know what I mean? Like you you could sing those parts too. You know that's that's kind of uh, also uh, oh, I'd have to say um, uh, you two and uh, Rage Against the Machine. How did it come about that Ryan became the current lead singer? That's a that's an interesting question. Um, so it, it was kind of weird because um, when uh, what happened was like we've been friends with Ryan uh, for a super long time, like all of us, like twenty years plus. Um, actually, Ryan, um, Dave Drew, our bass player, and uh, Jonathan Davis, um, they had a band 
like one of the first bands I think they ever had uh, way back in the day called Sex Art. And Ooh. so uh, they obviously had that relationship. And uh, Ryan knew that like um, the original group was actually like trying to do stuff. And, and he, uh, he hit us up because he wanted to help us out, you know, and, uh, and kind of help us get all that going. And then um, at some point, um, as like, you know, things are, you know, we're working on all of that, the whole thing with Mark kind of just imploded, you know, and, uh, and he, and he chose to, you know, not do music. So, and then he was just like, fuck, you know, like, I think he just, I think he, he kind of understood from his situation with orgy, you know, like there was kind of like some things that we saw eye to eye on, like similar situations with singers kind of just sabotaging the whole thing. And, um, uh, what uh, Chris Coles, I think, actually asked Ryan if he would sing uh, for our band. And uh, and he was like, yeah, like, I think he he really he lo- he likes, you know, he's always said that he's loved the music. Um, he felt for us that, you know, it's just not fair <laughs> that, that just like one dude like takes his ball and goes home. And then you have this band that, you know, plays well together and works well together. And 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 he and if, if we were able to actually make like good music together, if we were able to, you know, vibe on that level, um, he, he wanted to do it. And, um, and then, so like we had like a couple rehearsals to jam, just to see what it would sound like playing the songs. And like, it t- I, he's a way different singer than, than Mark. Um, but like, it has the same like energy to it, you know, like I get the same feeling out of it, even though it's a completely different style. And, and to me, that was the that was the make it moment. I was like, yeah, dude, that's and that was the same thing for him, too. You know. Hell yeah. Uh, Mike, what's what is the worst gig gig experience you've ever had? Like something just everything went completely wrong on this particular uh, this particular bill. Like you couldn't hear. Right. And I don't know. What's the worst gig story you got? God. Like which one? Um, <laughs> there, there was, <laughs> you know, it's funny cause there, there's a, a, a venue that, um, God, I'm trying to think what's the funniest one I could tell you. Um, I know that there was, um, a venue that we did like a, a couple years back, um, shortly before Ryan was in the band actually. And, um, uh, we uh we we're playing this venue and uh we show up you know you see like these crew guys there the bands are standing around everyone's standing around you know i i, I there was a, a time in my life when i worked for a nightclub i didn't doing like sound lights whatever and so i'm kind of like standing there we're talking everyone's cool but i'm looking around i'm like who's in charge right now like who is running this motherfucker and there was no one like no one was doing anything. No one knew what the fuck they were doing. So I was like, oh my God, there's not even going to be a show. Like no one's plugging in anything. No one's setting up shit. And so like, I just like, I did not want to do this, but I just like totally like took over. I'm like, okay, you take this microphone, you plug it into that. You And, and then like got like the, <laughs> the promoter to call the sound guy. The sound guy that just left. He's like, oh, I have the weekend off and, or whatever. You know, I'm like, dude, you left these people high and dry, motherfucker. Like mm-hmm. there isn't even going to be a show. So they they brought him back and that was pretty shitty. <laughs> there ended up being a show, but that definitely like that put my anxiety to like twenty five. The show must go on for sure. Uh, what do you guys have lined up for the rest of twenty twenty two that you can talk about? I know there's some stuff that you probably can't talk about, but is there anything you can let us know? Um, I would say the the most um, the thing I can let let you know uh, that's happening for sure is we are going to write and complete uh, a record. We've already um, recorded and finished three songs, like those two others that are just as finished as ready to die. You know, they're ready for us to put like, you know, make videos on or whatever. But I think we just kind of were trying to figure out our options on how we wanted to release things. Like, do we want to release this record? Do we want to release one song at a time? And I think that we're just, we're going to go into super writing mode uh, which Hell we've already yeah. yeah. And, uh, cause I, I mean, I think that especially after like, um, 
the response to ready to die. Like, I think we've got like a really good pulse on where our fans are out and what's kind of are at and, and what, what people are, are liking from us. Um, you know, we've been, we've been playing on the road with Ryan for a couple years now. And, uh, so I, I think that we've, uh, we've done our market research <laughs> and, uh, we're ready to just, uh, pull up in the studio, um, for half the year and, uh, record and have that ready to go. Excellent. Excellent. Lloyd, uh, do you who's have always, who, who's always late to practice? Who's always late to practice? Um, not me. Uh, but not 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 this year. <laughs> Actually, everyone's been pretty good this year. Uh, you know, um, we we rehearsed in Bakersfield, um, so I, I don't I don't want to throw anyone under the bus if they uh, live out of town. <laughs> it's not fair though. If someone lives out of town and 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 they have a hard time getting there. I, I can't. I can't. I leave can't break earlier. Balls over that. Leave earlier. I know. She left earlier. Plan born. I'm just kidding. I'm just gonna worry about me. I'm there gonna you get go. there. Hey. On fair enough. Hey. That's what I'm worried about. I ain't Hell worried about yeah. you. I'm worried about me. Hell I'm gonna yeah. be there on time and do my thing. That's all I'm worried about. <laughs> have you guys ever considered maybe having like uh like a collaboration on the new album like maybe a guest vocalist on a track and if so who would you want oh, um i mean dude like yeah that would be pretty fun i would be open to that sort of thing um maybe i don't know you know i i don't know if for like our first whole record with a new singer no, it makes sense. But I wouldn't say no. Yeah, you gotta let him have his time to shine for sure. Depends who's asking, man. Come on. <laughs> Some people you just can't say no to. It's true. Well, of course, there's people I wouldn't say no to. Like you know, like uh, I mean, any of our heroes. Of course, we wouldn't say no to that. You know, like we wouldn't say no to like John or or uh uh. Dave Draymond or uh, Till from uh, <clears throat> um, Rammstein or, you know what I mean? I, That'd be a gnarly was... feature. Holy shit. Yeah, that would be a cool one. It'd be trippy. Uh, so, you know, or something or something cool and different, whatever, you know? For sure. Mike, are you down to review a local band or two uh, with us? What could be of any genre, but we're going to pick one or two. Uh, Lloyd, so you think of one. I think I think one that he might dig would be Enemy. What do you think of that band, Enemy? Really cool, man. Like uh, they've got like a great overall energy, um, but really cool like uh, melodic um, hooks, but using like kind of like the the hard like screaming vocals for impact. But uh, so I, I'm I'm getting like kind of the the angst and the the melody, you know, uh, lots of cool stuff happening in there. They they sound like they're uh, like they really have a target that they're going for and are executing it really well. Uh, I've always been a fan Ooh. of Enemy, Enemy. They're actually not a signed band. They're they're looking, but uh, dude, I was just looking at the flyer for the for the cannabis event. It says Cheech and Chong on there twice. Are they on? Are they there? Are they going to be there? Uh, I don't know. That would be awesome. Who's who would be? Who would you say is the biggest celebrity you've ever met uh, while while on the road? Um, in your eyes, one of them. One of them while we were recording our first record was Paul McCartney. Wow, that's Paul. That's that my that's pretty fucking deep. stupid that's, cool. That's my that's my holy grail like favorite artist of all time. I would that go. was pretty fucking insane. He was he was actually recording at uh, the same studio we were when we were recording the first record, um, uh, Jim Henson Studios. Um, he was re yeah he was recording there like his like his um, uh, his bass was there, uh, the uh, Rick the the Rick and Bocker, you know. Um, but dude, dude, like that that was that was a really gnarly time because I mean he's I mean obviously he's gigantic. Um, you know, um, at the same time, Ozzy was also recording in that studio at the same time. So, <laughs> uh, Perry Farrell was there. A lot of creative uh, flo juices flowing there. 
Stevie Nicks. Yeah, dude, no, it was that was uh, it was pretty wild. That is amazing. All right, I'll I'll pick one. But do you want heavy or chiller? Oh, an- another big celebrity. I got a couple more. Okay, a couple do it. other ones. Hit us. Oh, uh, Justin Timberlake, Cameron no Diaz, shit. and Will I Am. Very cool. Will they I were all, that, that sounds like they were all so, probably hanging out together, and you met all three of them. I want to hang no, out with Justin Timberlake. They, there, I was working at this uh, studio um, called um, Spiral in Hollywood, and uh, th- like uh, Will I Am, he was producing like everybody, you know, like he would literally like do a show with um, uh, what's that group that so stupid of me? Black Eyed Peas. Black Eyed Peas. He would do a show with them. I remember he'd like show with them. Flew back from Japan and then like recorded beginning to end like a hit song. And uh, like, so he was recording like most deaf. He did like some stuff with Justin Timberlake. Um, and that's when uh, him and uh, Cameron Diaz were together. That was pretty wild. That does sound wild. Uh, okay. Wild. Would, would, Lloyd, would, uh, repeat your question. What, what, what do we want? Heavy or chill? On the second oh, local. Whatever. Okay. We're picking supporters. I know JB Music's been in the chat for like the whole show. So put on some, put on one of the chatters in here. Cool. Huh. Let's play Haunt Me from JB Music. I'm not gonna lie, if I knew it was gonna be that fucking depressing, I would have saved myself the sadness now. Damn it. <laughs> as fuck. Oops. <laughs> Mike, what's what's something that you it sounded really good. Cool. Uh what what is something that you that you listen to in your spare time that we would not expect you to jam? Oh shit. Yeah. Um <laughs> Um, that you wouldn't expect. I mean, I, I mean, I would say, um, like maybe like uh, uh, classical music, um, country, um, soundtracks, movie soundtracks. Movie soundtracks are the best. Which movie soundtrack is the I'll best? Get- best of all time. Oh, I know what you would definitely probably not expect. Uh, uh, some fusion jazz. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Cool. That's cool. Interstellar. Best movie soundtrack, Interstellar. Let's go. That's mine. Man, I'm a sucker for, for Grease. I love the Grease soundtrack. I know it's cheesy, but it is what it is. That's great. Mr. Mike Ransom, this is an absolute pleasure, sir. We are not worthy, we're but we appreciate worthy. you. Thank we're you so much for doing worthy. this. Guys, if you if you're a fan of Edema, please go show him some love. Hit the follow button on Spotify. Hit the the follow on on YouTube. Anything you can, and uh, go spin that new single, "Ready to Die." And if you're available in Southern California, actually, I'll just let you plug it, Mike. Go ahead and plug that the cannabis event one more time, if you could. All right, yeah, at the Garden Amphitheater this Saturday. I think we're gonna play sometime around seven thirty, but it's an all day event. Should be pretty cool if you're into the whole uh, uh, cannabis community. And it be around. We are. Gross, <laughs> cannabis. Hell yeah. <laughs> Mike, thank you so much, man. We appreciate it. Stay safe on the road, and uh, hopefully we get that record out at the end of 2022, and we can jam it, man. We're excited. Fuck yeah. Thank you, guys. Appreciate thank you, it. sir. Mike Ransom of Edema! Yeah, hell yeah! Woo! Appreciate you, dude.